For years we've heard the statement that breakfast is the most important meal of the day and have lived by it. But who started this myth and why were we so quick to accept it as truth? Well, legend has it that it all began in 1870 by a man named John Harvey Kellogg. Kellogg, whose cereal I'm sure you had all before, actually invented his cornflakes in the hopes that they would improve the health concerns that society was experiencing during that time. He sold the idea that a healthy breakfast would lead to more productivity and the cliche that breakfast is the most important meal of the day was born. Following Kellogg, a man named Edward Burney, who was working for a food company, was asked to help with bacon sales. To do so, he got a doctor to agree that a protein-rich, heavy breakfast of bacon and eggs was healthy and then got another 5,000 doctors to sign an agreement. With bacon and eggs now being medically recommended, Burney further emphasized the importance of breakfast in society. Since Kellogg and Burney, we have simply accepted this claim and failed to question its validity. But what actual proof exists behind this statement? Is breakfast really the important meal of the day, or have we been lied to all these years? To begin, what is breakfast? If we literally break down the word, it means breaking the fast. Or in other words, it's the first meal you have once you wake up from sleep. So what are the current claims exist to back up that breakfast is the most important meal? Eating breakfast is said to reduce cholesterol levels, improve heart health, maintain blood sugar levels, reduce risk for obesity, and help with weight loss. Let's look into each of these claims briefly. It has been known for a while that eating breakfast can help lower cholesterol levels. Many studies have proven that breakfast skippers will experience the highest cholesterol levels when compared to those that are eating breakfast. However, studies that confirm this claim looked at whether you ate breakfast and not what you ate for breakfast. Specifically, lower cholesterol levels were found in children that ate ready-to-eat cereals with fiber as opposed to chips and sweets or other forms of ready-to-eat cereal. In other words, though it is scientifically believed that eating a breakfast can improve cholesterol levels, the content of the breakfast dictates much of the results. Another claim associated with breakfast is that it can reduce risk for heart-related diseases and benefit heart health. The findings have mixed evidence in this claim. Although there is research supporting risk reduction of heart-related diseases, other research suggests the difference isn't that significant. A particular study looked at heart health in adults who had skipped breakfast and had a later meal around noon versus adults who had breakfast. Over the course of six weeks, values involving cholesterol, a type of fat, blood sugar, insulin, and hormones, which are all critical for heart health, did not change. As a result, it made no impact whether you skipped breakfast or had breakfast, and therefore, we can't be certain on what breakfast does directly for heart health. It has also been claimed that breakfast is the key for stable blood sugar throughout the day. However, studies show that kids are consuming over 50% of the recommended daily sugar at breakfast. This problem is complicated by the vast majority of parents believing in what they were feeding their children was in fact healthy. This high sugar breakfast is processed quickly by the body and can actually lead to a drop in blood sugar which negatively impacts mood and cognition. Thus, maintaining stable blood sugar cannot always be achieved by simply eating a big breakfast but is dependent on consistent healthy meals throughout the day. The belief that breakfast reduces risk for obesity and improves weight loss is another reason why breakfast is believed to be so important. For both obesity and weight loss, studies have again focused on whether individuals ate breakfast or not. In weight loss studies, neither skipping nor eating breakfast made a difference. However, researchers did find that skipping breakfast led to higher rates of obesity, and individuals who ate more than three meals a day and ate a daily breakfast were two times less likely to be obese. Overall, research that looks at the relationship between breakfast and body weight is still inconsistent. Therefore, it is hard to identify breakfast as the one factor that is responsible for body weight. Just to go over what we discussed, those that had breakfast daily did have lower cholesterols and a lower risk for obesity. Having or not having breakfast didn't impact weight loss and showed mixed evidence for heart health and related diseases. Also, having breakfast alone does not necessarily lead to maintaining sugar levels throughout the day. Within all the findings and studies discussed in this video, the truth behind the myth remains in question. However, the literature does point us in at least one direction. It's not about giving significance to one meal or attributing and promoting breakfast with such claims, but more about consistently making healthy living choices. For example, not exceeding daily energy requirements and eating from all food groups are some helpful habits that should be followed to encourage healthy eating. For more information, make sure to read over Canada's Food Guide to see what types of food you and your family should be eating. In addition, keep an eye out for the new and revised food guide that is coming out in 2018. And remember, all individuals are different depending on age, 
gender, culture, and other factors. Therefore, the food they need to eat in a day will change according to that. So, what should you take away from this video? While we did not find a clear answer to the myth, we hope this video encourages you as parents to actively investigate the role of breakfast within your and your child's life. Hopefully, future research will be more direct in determining the true importance of breakfast in one's life. Thank you for watching the Demystifying Medicine series published by McMaster University. If you like this video, please feel free to hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, or comment below. Please be mindful that this video covered general topics and was informative on a broad scale. Always refer to healthcare professionals for specific topics or advice when evaluating any concerning matters.